right, so our next presentation, uh, we're uh, happy to have uh, Dr. Mikhail uh, Abdurmahim, who's coming all the way from Algeria, uh, to present a case on multiple cardiac hydatid cysts. Hello, I'm Dr. Mkhewi Abdurrahman, uh, cardiologist from Algeria, North Africa. Today I'm going to present to you a very rare case of multiple ca cardiac hydatid uh, cysts. Our story begins Oh, there's, sorry. We, we got time, we got time. <clears throat> hey. Okay. I have no disclosures. So our story begins in a countryside in Western Algeria with a 19 year old female living in, a, in direct contact with sheep and canids, the two main hosts of echinococcus granulosis, the agent responsible for cystic echinococcus. It's good to mention that Algeria is a high endemic region for this disease. And it's good also to mention that only the public hospitals in the capital regularly offer CMR in the entire country. So the patient experienced chronic coughing and dyspnea for several months, which did not respond to any medical treatment. One day, she went to a doctor who ordered a chest X-ray showing an enlarged and heterogeneous cardiac shadow, prompting an urgent referral to a cardiologist. ECG showed inverted T waves in all leads with sinus rhythm, and TTE revealed multiple cardiac masses, raising suspicion for cystic echinococcus. This was unusual as cardiac uh, cardiac cysts are typically uh, solitary and rarely cause dyspnea. She was then referred to directly to cardiac surgery departments in our hospital in Oran. But unfortunately, we don't have a CMR training program in our country. However, my colleague, a radiologist, and I, a car the cardiologist, has just be be established a new CMR initiative from zero, thanks to SCMR educational resources and direct support from Professor Mingyan Ank. So we proceeded with it immediately using a 1.5 Tesla Siemens Zaira. CMRs were critical for five main points, starting with confirming the diagnosis. So the appearance on TTE could have been another type of cardiac masses like multiple myxomas, rhabdomyomas, sarcomas, metastatic tumors, and also pericardial mesotheliomas. Here you can see typical sign of cystic inicocosis, daughter cysts. Along with T2 hyperintensity and T1 hypointensity confirming the fluid nature of the cysts. Second, uh, it helped us also assessing the location, stages, and anatomical involvement with other structures. I will run the clips and let you see directly the complexity of this case. So here's the uh, transverse plane with CNI SSFP. You can see clearly uh, the massive com compression of this cyst on the posterior atrial walls, with one cyst inside the left appendage, another beside the circumflex artery groove, and we can barely see the pulmonary veins we can also see here multiple uh, cysts besides the pulmonary artery trunk. Uh, in the sagittal plane, uh, we can better assess involvement of left ventricle walls. Here you can see the inferior wall, the lateral wall, the anterior wall also, and even the RV apex, like you can see here clearly. Uh, other sequences can also help for anatomy, like the uh, T1 vibe fat saturation. Here's a brief reminder of Garbi's classification that we usually use in Algeria, because there is a recent uh, classification from WHO, which differs just for uh, type 2 in Garbi is type 3 in WHO and vice versa. So uh, we find only type 1 and 3 in this case. Type 1 could respond to antiparasitic medical treatment, which is albendazole, while type 3 carries a high risk of rupture, with surgery being the best treatment choice. It also helped exclude type 5, where cyst wall is calcified with a low risk of rupture or multiplication. The third point was explaining the symptoms, because uh, like I said in the beginning, cardiac cysts usually don't give uh, dyspnea. So you can see here the acceleration of the two pulmonary veins blood flow that could contribute to dyspnea, but we couldn't be sure, because I don't know even if uh, 4D flow or a contra fast contrast sequences can help with that. And uh, this is a reminder of the cyst compressing the uh, pulmonary veins. There was also a large pulmonary cyst in the right lung with another small cyst in the left, uh, in the left lung, where, which could cause either pulmonary embolism or tracheal compression. The fourth point was estimating prognosis. We already saw this in the second and third point with the complexity of the lesions anatomy and the frequent Garby tree cysts. So uh, 
Also here in the, um, the, the enteral left atrial cyst was critical because it could either embolize or rupture spontaneously, leading to anaphylactic shock. CT was also helpful later in assessing a prognosis, especially for evaluating coronary artery involvement with all arteries having some intercystic course. Unfortunately, we did not have stress CMR to explore ischemia and better plan treatment strategy. We couldn't analyze LGE either uh, because uh, our team la had limited experience with it. It can detect complications like abscesses and infarcts, assess involvement of myocardial wall, and assess if the cyst wall is fibrotic or inflamed to determine treatment response. Finally, CMR was extremely helpful for planning surgery. Uh, first, for selecting cysts to reject through the bulk, like this cyst inside the left atrial appendage, or this cyst uh, in direct contact with the RV apex, but also choosing in choosing the cannulation strategy, as both the superior vena cava and suprahepatic IVC were covered by multiple cysts, making bicaval cannulation very difficult for surgeons. Here you can see the IVC in, uh, behind the cyst, and in another plane you can see it's suprahepatic. Uh, course of it uh, covered by uh, cysts. Uh, and this was the superior vena cava also covered by cysts and confirmed later by CT. Uh, finally, here is a video from the surgery showing uh, the excision of some Garby tree cysts in the atrial walls. And this one is the intra-LA cyst, the most dangerous one. So our patient was very brave. Her symptoms had significantly impacted her quality of life, so she chose to take the risk of surgery as her only possible option to have a decent life. Unfortunately, uh, she passed away after the surgery, uh, and I conclude with this painting that doesn't only reflect the suffering of our patient, but also underscores the profound struggles of doctors in Africa who tirelessly strive to provide even basic CMR scans or access proper training. So I hope this case will serve as a valuable resource for doctors around the world to, deep, to deepen their understanding of CMR in cardiac masses evaluation. And thank you for your attention. Thank you.